Hello and welcome everybody. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about the call and return instructions. Okay, we briefly explained them in the presentation, which you should have watched by now. If you haven't watched it, watch it in the last lesson and you'll see how that works. Okay, so we're going to be really using practical examples of calling and returning from functions or subroutines in, in assembler now. Okay, so in the hello world example, you will see that we use the start symbol. Okay, we're going to be doing things a bit differently this time. We're going to be using uh, the C standard library. Okay, which means we will use the main function instead. Okay, we will hold the main function. Okay, in our own code. So our entry point will be main going forward. Now the reason why we're going to do that is because I want to be able to use things like printf and things like this in our function. So if you've ever used uh, C before, you might have done something like this, you know, printf decimal 50, for example, right? Stuff like that. We will be able to do things like that in assembly as long as we link with the C standard library, okay? So that's just something to be aware of going forward. So we're going to start by saying bit 64 to signify to assembly that we're going to use 64 bit instructions. And then we're going to use default rel to signify that we're using relative addressing, okay? Uh, and then here we're going to say extern printf. And this gives us access to the printf function later on when we link with the standard library. We're going to say global main, which means we hold the main function, okay? We're going to say section.data, okay? And in here we're going to store the format, okay? So we're going to say fmt percent ld new line null terminator, okay? Now, what is this? Well, essentially, guys, you can do things like this, can't you? You can do things like this in C, right? So obviously we need a way to store the format and that's what we're doing. We're storing the format here and we will pass that into printf later on when we actually want to perform the print. So then we're going to create the text section. We're going to create a main function by making a main label. and We're going to say move RDI 50. So this will move 50 into the RDI register. We're going to say move RSI 20. This will move 20 into the RSI register. Then we're going to say call underscore sum. Now we're going to create the sum label now above the main function like this. Okay, sum colon. So what's going to happen is we're going to pass in 50 to RDI, 20 into RSI register, and then we're going to call sum. Now what this will do, this will push the address of line 20, address here, goes to stack. It'll push it to the stack. You understand? Like I showed you in the presentation. And then the idea is when the sum is done, it can perform a return instruction, which will pop that address off the stack and jump to it. So it'll jump back to line 20. So just an example, 50 goes into our RDI, 20 goes into RSI. We store the address of line 20 on the stack and then we jump to the sum label. So the processor executes here. Do you understand? And then we call ret. And ret will return from the subroutine. How it does that? It pops the address off that we pushed when we used call sum. And now the address of line 21 is jumped to. So we jump from line 16 to 21. And this is how that works, guys, the call and returns, okay? So then what we're going to do next is we're going to say add RDI RSI. Okay, and then we're going to say move RAX RDI. So the idea is we add the RDI and RSI registers together, and then we store the result in the RAX register, okay, on line 17. Okay, because RDI, RSI, they get added together, so 50 and 20 get added together. The result gets stored in RDI, so RDI now equals 70, okay. And then the convention with C is that you always return the result in the RAX register, okay? So then we're expected to move the RDI register value into the RAX register just to maintain convention with C, okay? So now on line 23, the RAX register contains 70 and that's what we're going to print out, okay? So how do we do that? Very simple, print the result. And what we're going to do? We're going to move RDI FMT. So this moves the format into the RDI register. Okay. Because printf expects the first argument to be RDI. 
all C functions expect the first argument to be R R D I and the second argument to be R S I. Okay. And then we're going to move into the R S I register. The number which will be R A X. And now we're going to clear the EAX register so it goes to zero. And this is expected because of the var argument count. Okay. And then we're going to call printf. And then we're going to return zero to the shell. And then we're going to return from the main function. So this, this simple program should output 70 if this works as expected. And now I'm just going to zoom out so you guys can see this again at a, at a more easier way. Zoomed in way too much. So there's the main function. 50 into RDI, 20 into RSI. Call the sum. And we print the result by putting the format, which is here, the address of that format, into the RDI register. And then the result into the RSI register. Okay. Call the printf which makes GCC output the result. Now, what is the result? 70. So let's test it in our terminal. We're going to first assemble this program. So we're going to say nasm-felf64 call functions.asm. Now this will create a call functions.o file. Okay. And now we're going to use GCC to link it so that this standard library is included. So we're going to say GCC dash no dash pi dash o call functions because that's the output executable name. And then we're going to say call functions dot o. Okay. So that will link the call functions dot o with the C standard library. And it will output a call functions executable. If you press enter now, you'll see this little warning that um, because we haven't put the stack section that this is deprecated and it will be remo removed in a future version. That's okay. It's because we never bothered to set up the stack section. Not a problem. In the future, if it's giving you some error, you can just make this section, right? And then it'll be fine. Okay, so we can see now that we have the call functions executable in green here. So if you run that, what do you see? You see 70. So congratulations, guys. You just learned how to call subroutines. Thanks for watching this free YouTube video teaching you a topic on assembly language. If you really like this uh, course, you can even learn kernel development in the description and put those assembly skills to practice. Check the video description where you'll get a link to the paid course at Dragon's App and you'll learn how to build your very own 32-bit protective mode kernel that's multitasking all from scratch.